working for free for so long and providing so much value up front, never asking nor expecting anything in return may have just paid off grossly. So last week on Wednesday, I got dinner with an, an ex NFL football player who now is, has like a podcast and he's a sports network host type of guy's name is Seth Joyner. He used to pay, play for the Eagles. Uh, you, you guys know how most sports commentators or are ex players. And this guy, he used to work for one of the big networks. Like, it was like CNBC or one of those. I, I don't think it was CNBC, but it was something CBS. Maybe he was working for them, having to have a show where he went over the Eagles, but he got poached by some guy who was trying to grow a massive media brand that they will hopefully sell to ESPN. Kind of like what Pat McAfee did where Pat McAfee, I'm pretty sure he sold for a few hundred million dollars. He had a massive social media team where he was, he still does, uh, making these videos, getting tons and tons of views. And he sold for ESPN for a few hundred million dollars, I believe. So that was what this guy was trying to do. So he basically, he poached Seth Joyner. He said, Hey, why don't you start a podcast under my brand? And we will, he did this with maybe 20 other people who were in a same, who were in a similar position and he doubled their pay. The way that he was going to pay for that was sponsors and all this revenue that was supposed to be coming in and other products and kind of what he thought traditional media was like. So he was paying these guys a ton of money out of pocket, but he doesn't understand how to get views online. And I've never met this guy, but that's just the results. The results show that the people under this guy's umbrella that he's paying, obviously egregious, I mean, ridiculous amounts of monies to have these podcasts and radio stations and, and uh, YouTube channels, they are not performing and they are not bringing in the revenue that he was expecting. So Seth basic, basically came to me and he said, what can I do to increase my views? Obviously he wants to do well. He actually paid for a billboard in Philadelphia uh, during the football season because he's a football commentator to get more people to a show. And I was laughing. I was like, dude, that is such an old way of thinking. What you need to do is you just need YouTube is a completely decentralized source. You just need to understand how to get more views. And I just, I was there with Kenny and Kenny said, dude, this is what he did for me. Why don't we let him do this for you? Anyway, here's my plan to where in a few months I could literally be making, I, I'm not even going to say, <laughs> uh, let me just walk you through my plan first. So I'm going to do everything I can for this guy. Seth, he's a incredibly intelligent guy, super smart. I really like him. I'm going to do everything I can for him for free to jack up his numbers a ton, which I know I can because they're doing everything wrong because they're trying to be a traditional media company when that's just not what works right now. So I'm going to jack everything from, for him up. And I'm basically going to talk to the guy who poached him and has started this umbrella. And, I, and I'm going to say, I think he has like 25 to 40 people under his umbrella that he's paying the sum, but the results are not great. He obviously wants to sell to ESPN. The only way he can do that is if he gets views. That is something that I understand to a very high degree, how to get these views over to them. And so I'm going to bring as much results to Seth as I can. And I'm basically going to tell this guy, I will do this for everybody. This is where uh, a lot of money could come in. So I would have to start a business where I could service 25 to let's say 40 other clients, which I think I could have the capacity for not right now, but in the future, uh, if we set, put up some sort of payment plan, I could charge them, you know, buy Five grand per month per, per person or something, but that's not where the real money is going to be made. That is going to be a one step process of this potential business. I'm going to then say, obviously your goal is to sell. You guys are doing all these types of advertising. Instead of putting your advertising budget on billboards and these other old sources of, of entertainment that kind of are commercials, like you guys are doing now, trying to get people over the best way that you can do that is from this mass clip redistribution channel. Since you are all in the same niche, we can do take everything from what you were doing. And instead of doing the paid ads that you're doing right now to try and grab traffic, we are going to do an organic version of paid ads where we are doing, where we are setting up hundreds of quote unquote fan accounts. This is pretty standard stuff that a lot of people in the top space are doing, but not to my knowledge, no one in the uh, sports needs. So they would really be the first people doing it. So we would be basically taking clips from all the podcasts that this guy have, has in his network, posting it across hundreds of different accounts. What the goal is, let's say if you post one video on one account, it could get, let's say hundred thousand views. You do that three times a day. You'd get 300 views per day on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, uh, across the, all the platforms. But if you have hundreds of accounts posting different clips, because it's not spam, because you have so many different accounts, you could be getting tens of millions of views per week, per month. And what the goal is to drive that to the long form stuff, that's going to give them more opportunity to monetize it better. And eventually his goal is to sell to ESPN. So that is the way that I'm going to structure it. And I would basically then be in charge of all of the um, online stuff for the guys underneath his umbrella, which I think is very likely that I could do that just because I know what I'm doing <laughs> because I, I'm at least fairly confident that I could show results for all of them. Then it just comes down to servicing that many people at, at once. These are the types of opportunities that I would really jump at because they are so scalable so quickly. You would go from making nothing to multi, multi six figures a month instantly, just because you have so much volume and so many people that you would be doing it with. The main issue is going to be, you, I would have to be able to scale excruciatingly quickly because I would need to be able to service all of them pretty much at once, which I know that I can do. It's just going to be incredibly stressful. I'm going to have to make a few key hires, but I would have the funds to do that. So I, I, honestly, I would, I'm just much more excited for that type of opportunity. But that's just what I'm thinking about right now. I mean, there's a fairly low likelihood that it comes to promotion, but since it's not zero, I want to think through all of the possibilities and the probabilities just so I can be prepared if, if the opportunity arises itself. And I'm definitely going to be trying to put the chips on the table and let them fall where they may. But for me, that's a really, really exciting, <laughs> exciting thing, because then if I could service all of those people, that's how you can build a pretty serious company over a multi-year period. But I guess we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's also midnight. I have a flight at 5 a.m. Anyway, I'm just spitballing. I and mean, this is just what I, I think about before I go to bed. <laughs>
just stupid things like this. Uh, but this is what I really like to geek out over. Uh, I have so much fun thinking about these sorts of concepts. I'm just I'm not having a good time articulating it because I'm freaking I'm exhausted. Anyway, I'm excited to get back to Arizona. Sunny weather. Gotta get back to work. Goodbye.